This video is gonna be all about um, what I'm thinking for next year, how you can prepare for next year, and I'm gonna leave you with um, some resources and those will come at the very end. So if you are interested in learning more, stay tuned and again, watch till the very end because at the end, I'm gonna give you um, some information about how to access and then use the resources that I am planning on creating and then using for my own teacher. So let's hop into this video. Okay, so let's just jump right into it. Um, we know that a lot of people don't want to be teachers anymore. That's um, not just from like nationwide data, but like in real time, I'm seeing that the applicant pool for my district is like dry it's not a pool it's like a desert so we know that people don't want to teach so this video is kind of geared towards um retention right we just want people to stay inside the classroom and i think in order to do that you need to come in with a plan if you're a new teacher if you're a vet teacher um whoever this next year coming up is going to be crucial because a lot of people ended this year sort of on the tip of like i'm burnt out i'm done um, this is the end for me. And we don't want that. We want uh, people who are willing to stay in their position, especially strong ESOL teachers, because we know that that is an obvious um, gap that kids are coming in with. They have, um, they need language, right? So we need these teachers to stay in their position. So in thinking about that, we want to come in with a few things. So I'm just going to give you um, two quick tips that um, I feel like will be useful moving forward. So um we know that we're tired so take a break um when school lets out um but as school is coming back in and we're moving into um like the august ish for up here maybe down south i feel like maybe like july i don't know i don't know how early you guys go back but right before you go back you need to take a minute to long-term plan and i'm not talking about lesson planning because that day-to-day -day will come. But I'm talking about long-term sort of scope and sequence. What is the big picture, the big goal, that sort of plan. Now, the only way you're going to be successful at long-term planning is if you have some sort of data. So my suggestion for you guys, if you're an ESOL teacher, so there's a few things. If you're a new ESOL teacher, you're going to reach out to your um, admin and you're going to try to get access to your assessment data so that your students should have WIDA access score. So you're looking for WIDA access. Um, if you're not a new teacher, if you're a vet, then what you're looking at is all of that EOY data and you're combining it all together. And both of you, new and vet teachers, are taking that data and you're placing students' names on a can-do name chart. Now, the can-do name chart is not to be shared yet. That's because you're obviously going to have probably some new students coming in that you're going to need to screen, and then their names will be added to that can-do name chart. Um, but what the can-do name chart is, it's like a companion to the can-do descriptors where students are lumped into sort of like these groups, and from that, you can create your language goals. Now, again, if you're not familiar with the can-do name chart, I'm going to leave the link in the description box below. I also have another video on this channel explaining what the can-do descriptors are, so go ahead and watch that. Um, but it's going to be helpful to see where your students are. So again, if you see like as a new teacher um, coming in, a lot of your students are low in the area of reading, then you know that most of my groups, at least for quarter one, I'm going to be pulling them and I'm going to be working on these foundational literacy skills. Now, the can-do descriptors are broken up into gray bands. So obviously, not all of your students are going to struggle in all the same area. But if you notice that there is a trend when you're putting those names on that chart, then it's going to guide and drive your instruction. So you got to go in with that plan. We can't be coming in blind um, because that's not helpful to our students. So the other piece is we, um, if you're already familiar with the can-do name chart and you've been using it over time you already know that that's useful um when the chart is finalized you are going to share that with your content teachers that you work with and you're going to make sure that they understand the chart because that's going to also be helpful for them while they're scaffolding the work and while you're um you know 
pulling your students or pushing in. It's not like a constant sort of like tapping you on the shoulder. What do I do for this child? You can always go back and reference that um, can do name chart. It's right there for them. Tell them to hang it on their wall. Obviously, you're meeting with them on a regular basis, but that's just something that they can reference independently. And the second thing is, so once you have the can do name chart and the students are all laid out and you're thinking about language goals, for me, it's always helpful to have a document where I house whatever my goals are. So I have gone ahead and created um, a quarterly goal sheet. So it's just a way to organize your thoughts. So if once you have these language goals, and obviously it's not just language goals in the absence of whatever supports you're giving to your content teacher. So let's say, again, let's go back to that example. Your language goal is um, to grow these students in the area of reading and build their foundational literacy skills. Um, but then also your content teacher is saying like, oh, we have these writing assessments coming up. Can you work on that as well? So during your sessions, again, it's going to drive your instruction. So now I know that these are two of my goals. Um, and then on that quarterly goals um, sheet, you have sort of areas for every, so, so it organizes everything. So it has all the different domains of language. It has whatever quarter you're in um, and you're thinking about like, what are the goals and how am I gonna tell whether or not the students met mastery? So what is the assessment that I'm giving to the students or what is the progress monitoring tool that I'm looking at to um, just ensure that kids are meeting mastery? And so what's, what that's going to do, too, is give you guys language to talk about your kids. So a lot of times what I see is when we're speaking about growth, especially in the area of ESOL, um, teachers use sort of like general language, very broad, very like, yes, they are growing. But then um, we need to get to a point where we're speaking about our students in a more concise way. So if you have these data points that you know that you're referencing, and you know that, you know, I'm doing this progress monitoring on a bi-weekly, tri-weekly basis. And at the end of this quarter, I can say that they actually did meet mastery because I'm looking um, at apples to apples. I'm comparing apples to apples. Um, that's going to be powerful when you go into these um, meetings with your teachers, your content teachers. If someone calls you into an SST meeting for one of your students, um, it's going to be super helpful for you guys to, again, speak to your kids. We know that you know your kids, but we want you to um, be able to articulate what it is that you know about your students without just saying, again, like very sort of like blanket statements. Like, yes, they are showing growth in language, but what specific domains and what assessment am I using to measure that? Okay, so I'm gonna leave the link to my, the resource that I just talked about where you can organize your quarterly goals. That's gonna be on my um, TPT, my Teachers Pay Teacher um, store. And um, if you go there and you like what you see, feel free to follow. Um, I'm also going to link the Can Do name chart below. So what's gonna come up are the is the page for the Can Do descriptors. But if you scroll down to the bottom and you look over across from the Can Do descriptors, it'll have the Can Do name charts organized into um, gray bands so that you can take that and then put your students' information into those charts. Okay, so this was great. I always enjoy coming on here and giving you guys any gems. Hopefully you got something useful. I want you to comment below. Let me know what you think is the biggest issue for you moving into next school year. And we will chat about how we will tackle it together. Don't forget to comment, 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 like, 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 and subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Share it with someone who you think might find it useful. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.